Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9. And for those of you who are finished with the dungeon ranking event or, you know, kind of putting it to the side for an hour and want to do something different, I've got the video for you here. It's Lapena Ghost, the limited time crisis dungeon. I feel like we had one of these already. I don't know, maybe... I know that I had a Lapena Coast video, but maybe it was something different. Anyway, we're going to go into this video, S+, plus, um, and I'll show you my team. Before I do show you the team, I will show you the enemy setup. And this is what we're looking at here. So every single boss is weak to fire. Circle Sigil is the only sigil I'll be really focusing on here. The only other thing I would really note is that... Um, this one can't be debuffed, you know, offensively, but can defensively. Gallon Belor, the main boss, he can be debuffed all the way. Icy Raven, same thing. There's a lot of debuff potential in this particular battle, so just something uh, to maybe, you know, take note of before you go in. So this is the team that we did it with. You know, one thing I do want to say real quickly, though, is I just got this, by the way, uh, after I finished this dungeon, I just got my refills here because I finished this right before reset uh, and I'm filming this. It'll come out tomorrow, but filming it Sunday. So anyway, um, you know, I'd like to try to do this with a weaker team, but I still haven't even started on the second dungeon. I'd like to also get that one done this week. You know, it usually takes at least two run-throughs, bare minimum two run-throughs to make a video, you know, to have it kind of streamlined and stuff. And I'd like to experiment more, but ultimately, you know, there is there is a limited amount of tries. And so eh, that kind of sucks. I don't know why the game does that, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So anyway, here's what we're going with. Uh, limited healing. And so we'll start with Tifa. And she's got lifeguard wraps and uh, she's using the Amaranth costume mostly for the hp buff um it's not super big you can tell she has plenty of hp but her physical attack and magical attack stats are nothing to write home about they're actually quite bad physical defense magical defense average and the heal is like probably right about the lowest you'd want it to be um but we are using leather gloves for physical attack decrease uh that's useful for at least two if not maybe three of the bosses um, we are using Somersault because most of them can be debuffed, so that'll be how she kind of, uh, how she fits into this party. She is a debuffer, and we got Fire Breach here that's going to be useful for everybody. We've got Defaith, and that's mostly for one boss because there's really nothing else she needs. Uh, Circle Sigil, she's set up with that. For sub-equipment, this is for heal, this is for heal, this is for HP, and that is Tifa. Coming over to Sephiroth, he is our secondary damage dealer. Nothing really fancy here. We've got Radiant Edge for his debuff, uh, the fire. Uh, we'll notice that it stacks to mid. So ideally, we'd like to start with the fire breach on Tifa, follow it up with this, and then we would have our mid potency fire debuff. Also physical defense decrease at the same time. So that is really good for getting in damage. Because it has this fire boost here, plus 30%, that's how we'll be using fire damage with fire blow. Um, we brought Torn Wing for defense buff because of the fact that, uh, you know, most of the enemies are going to be hitting pretty hard physically. So if it was needed, I think I'd use it one time in the run. I'm not using any summon because fire is really the only one that I'm concerned with. We've got his garb here for fire mastery plus 20% fire damage. And we've got Circle Sigil. This one up here is just a stat stick. Other than that, we have Left Go Kipseli. That's just for some stats and some physical defense. We have Nameless here for HP primarily. And we have Prototype Crimson Blade to up his fire potency. Uh, we were able to get him right up to level 4. Which, you know, isn't that bad. And then coming over to Cloud, he's our primary damage dealer. And... We are using his Sky Splitter here for 580% physical fire damage. And we've got the official festive garb for that Flame Blade Arcanum. That will be really doing a lot of work for us here. Uh, we brought Zidane's Sword for the ability, physical ability potency and physical attack. These are all uh, stat sticks for physical attack with the exception of having a Circle Sigil Break. And um, other than that, we'll go to sub equipment. This is for HP and physical ability potency, physical ability potency, physical attack, 
and fire potency. So with that, we were able to get him just shy of 3,300 physical attack and his fire potency is also level four, just like Sephiroth. But adding to that, we've got physical ability potency. So that'll be doing pretty good work. And that's why we have Ifrit on Cloud. That is our team setup. Nothing, uh, it's pretty straightforward, I'll be honest. Just jam Circle Sigil on everybody, fire, and then I went with a debuffer more than a healer because ultimately I think you can push enough damage through most of these fights that you don't really need any significant healing. But you could substitute Tifa for Aerith. I'm sure it would work just fine. With that out of the way, we will get into the dungeon. All right, so we start off, we're gonna come over here, grab our fire cocktails. This first part is pretty linear because you can't go to the right, the boards will break, won't let you go past. So we're gonna come up here and go to the first boss. Actually, there's an add-on fight right before that. So anyway, go to the first boss here. And I think this is one of the harder bosses, mostly because he brings poison. Uh, you could set up to you know, bring a, a healing Asuna for poison. I don't because it's the very first boss. And although it does make it a little bit of a chore because we brought limited healing, because of the fact that it's the only the very first boss that has the poison, I didn't feel like it merited uh, using a materia slot for a poison cure. Uh, if you need it though, you know, bring it. Um, but if you, you know, have enough damage, I think you can get through this. And ultimately, I think it makes the rest of the run a little bit easier. Not sure that we actually ended up using the D faith. Sometimes I get some of my runs a little confused. So yeah, anyway. All you're gonna do is is literally just keep jamming your fire spells at him. Um, none of his moves hit very hard because he's the very first boss. So just keep up with the healing on the poison uh, just so you don't die. And it really isn't that hard of a boss. Okay, 58,800, whatever. Here, we're gonna take fire potency plus 10%. Uh, if you're worried at all, just take the 5%. Um, I don't think it's a huge difference either way, but I didn't take the 15% because I thought those the lowering of those stats was just too much. We're going to come up here and do this boss next. Why? He's pretty easy. There's no add-ons or anything, so we're really just going to kind of burst him down, start off with the Fire Breach from Tifa, and then right before he does his Fog Breath, I'm going to cancel it with Somersault just because it's kind of an annoying skill and I just want to prolong it as much as possible. And then I'm going to come over... I'm gonna hit the stuff uh, on Cloud and Sephiroth. I should have done the Sephiroth debuff there, probably, um, but I didn't use that debuff in the previous run, so there were some times when I switched over to Sephiroth and just like kind of panicked or hit some of the wrong stuff, but it's okay. Ultimately, you can see this guy just doesn't really, he's not that hard. 61,000, not a bad score. Here, we're gonna take fire potency plus 10% because everybody's weak to fire. I think that just that just kind of makes sense. And here, I am going to use some high potions just to heal up a little bit. Again, I kind of sacrificed not doing a lot of healing, so that'll kind of just pay dividends for us here. This fight, though, we're gonna try to get finished with as fast as possible. So a fire breach, immediately hell firing. That way, it'll kill the add-ons off. I'm also going to combo with Sephiroth's uh, Limit Break because, you know, I'm just trying to kill this guy as fast as possible because this is the third boss. So this way I can use the fourth boss as a time to rebuild my limits and my summons for the final boss. And uh, that should kind of work out for us pretty well. There you go. Uh, literally nothing. I mean, it didn't do hardly anything. And at the end of this run, we're going to have plenty of points to spare. So if you're having any doubts at all, Use a fire cocktail in your main fire damage dealer between each one of these fights. Like, it's you're still gonna have enough score, and it might just make the the fight that much easier for you. Um, okay, fire breach. Uh, I'm I, these guys. I'm just trying to kill the add-ons. I, I think maybe I could have just gone for him. Um, I don't know, but anyway, I see that Sephiroth was targeted. Uh, with the jump move, so I went and used Torn Wing's ability to buff his defense. I also used Omni Strike on Tifa to lower the attack, and you can see it still does a pretty hefty amount of damage, about two thousand or three thousand damage, and that was with you know two arrows down on his attack from what he buffed it, and two arrows up on Sephiroth's defense. 
But after this, uh, we are going to kill off this final uh, minion, and then we can start on him. He buffs his uh, defense also, so you know that's something to keep in mind and why Sephiroth's Radiant Edge is such a good weapon for this fight. Uh, Circle Sigils, I think this is maybe the first time it's really come into play for us. Um, but, you know, really, just once you kill off the adds, I think, and once you survive that first jump, not that big of a deal. I can tell you, though, this is another reason why I focus more on DPS than on anything else. Because if you, if you notice, he'll continue to buff himself throughout this fight and continue to do the jumps. And it becomes hard if you're trying to both heal and debuff him and do all these things at one time. You can get into this little bit of a race where you kind of feel like you're losing. So I just go with the attack route um, and that'll be the easiest way. Here we took physical attack plus 10% because both of our damage dealers are using physical attacks. So we don't care about magic attack. There's an add-on fight here. It's not too hard. Uh, we already had all our summons and stuff charged up. So really there was no point. If, or there, there was no benefit to us in having that fight. Here, fire cocktails on both of our damage dealers. And then, you know, I didn't need the cottage, so I just went ahead and used the supplement, uh, used the high potion. Um, yeah. And that's about it. This guy is actually pretty simple with the fire cocktails. And the only thing you have to know is switch your stance immediately because watch how much damage this does. 3,500 damage, and that was with a stance change. So it's about 5,000 damage if you don't. And I can tell you that's what happened to me the first run that I did, and it was not pretty. Also, I didn't have all of my uh, summons charged. So make sure you have those. And you can see here, I mean, this is just an insane amount of damage, and it kind of makes this fight really simple and by the way a fire cocktail uh, especially if you have cloud with this fire arcanum a fire cocktail makes almost all of these fights pretty simple so here i omni strike just in case but i wasn't really ready for this 52,000 damage cloud was going to put out that's the entire fight that's the entire dungeon ultimately this was i think my second run through so I just don't think it was that difficult. And you can see my score, I had plenty to spare. So that's it. Hopefully this dungeon helped you. If it did, like the video, subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.